Hey guys, Matt here from Fusion Motorsport. We're here at Vibrant Performance right now, standing in front of Terrell's IS300. It's 2J powered, and uh, what we're gonna be doing is building some titanium intercooler piping and a titanium fender exit exhaust for the car. Over here on the bench, we have all the Vibrant Performance products that we're gonna be using in Terrell's IS300 build. We have some HD clamps, some titanium weld ferrules, the vibrant titanium pie cuts, straight tubing, and we also have some and wrenches for assembling all the hose ends at the end. And then obviously a collection of fittings and hose ends here. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually get started putting these products together and getting them on Terrell's IS300. So follow along and follow the fabrication process. Open up these boxes. We have the six pieces to a 90 pie cuts here, three and a half. This is gonna be for the uh, cold side intercooler pipe, the one from the intercooler to the throttle body. So I always like to pull all these out per box. All right, so we're gonna open up all these pie cuts. What I like to do is I always like to get one taped together so we can have the radius of the bend. Now that we can put it off of the throttle body and make sure we'll have enough space for the HD clamp as well as the 90 and make sure we don't have to modify anything before we get this all actually tacked together. So what I like to do is I like to grab a piece of painter's tape, put it on the workbench, and then actually cut little strips And then I can use these to tape the pie cuts together to test fit how they'll fit. So I'm gonna get them all set up square. Right now, one of the easiest ways to set it up is it has that laser seam in the middle. So I actually will line those all up, make sure it's square 90, and then test fit it on the car before I tack it together. So I don't scratch it. So I always, before we start actually putting the HD clamp in the bay, I'll throw a little piece of tape on it. That way you don't have a nice HD clamp with a scratch on it before you even get a chance to use it. Let's see what kind of space we have in the bay with the HD clamp and the six pieces to a 90 in three and a half pie cuts. So we don't want to cut any holes in here. So we can see right now our full assembly is too long to fit in it just like this. Even once we weld it and it shrinks a little bit, it's still too long for the bay. So we're gonna modify the throttle body and shorten that a little bit. And uh, hopefully that buys us a little bit of space that we need to get this section pulled back. Since we're checking right now to make sure what fits and what needs to be modified to fit it properly, I'm gonna pull out the three inch cast 90. This is gonna go off the compressor outlet of the turbo. And you can see right now we're in the same idea. It doesn't fit off of the turbo. So we're gonna be pulling the compressor cover off and that way we can cut it and then attach the cast three inch 90 or weld it to the compressor cover. So we're gonna do a little protective wrapping here to keep the shock tower fresh while we take the comp cover on and off the car. So just like some standard blue painters tape, but it'll help us from getting any little scratches from it going on and off. The reason I always do this lower section under the turbo is because we're gonna be holding up the Cast 90 up to the compressor cover outlet, as well as the HD clamp and some pie cuts later. So this will just help protect that freshly painted lower frame section in case anything drops or falls onto it. Right at the very, very end here, I pretty much stopped pushing the part through the saw. I just kind of let the teeth get that last piece. Get 
get all this coating off for welding. So we're gonna be welding the HD flange right to the throttle body. So what we're doing now, we're gonna test fit our throttle body and our HD clamp and our 90 again and uh, see what the fitment looks like. See from before, we almost were pushing past the headlight. Now we're tucking just in front of the rad. I wanna shorten it down slightly, just a little bit more to pull us a little bit farther away from the rad. Um, and then this will be ready to actually start getting it ready to be tacked into place, which will be good. So we just finished shortening down the throttle body as well as the uh, actual HD weld ferrule as well. I took the step to lift off of it. So now we will have enough space to have everything snug and have it come in front of the rad and wrap around the frame rail. So now we have enough space where we can take the throttle body off and tack the weld ferrule to the throttle body and start working on fabricating this uh, titanium three and a half charge pipe. So what I just did was I actually removed the uh, edge of the weld ferrule. That way it would butt up perfectly with the Cas90. Then I got the Cas90, the lip cut off the other side to match up to the compressor outlet. Now we're gonna test fit it back on the car one final time and uh, make sure this fits perfectly where we'd like it to. And that is exactly perfect. Currently trying to fit together some different pieces for the intercooler piping. So that way I can figure out what the best shape and design is to do. So we spent a little bit of time getting the cold side pipe into position and getting the throttle body and the HD flange shortened. I also brought a uh, vibrant HD alignment tool with me today for this side so we can get that properly set up. Right now I'm working on getting the hot side off of the turbo. Yesterday we were working on getting the turbo shortened and the cast elbow shortened slightly to fit in closely with the shock tower. And have the turbo cover off of the uh, manifold. And uh, now I'm gonna be working on this three inch titanium pie cut section that wraps around the frame and down underneath the, uh, the car here. While you're doing this, it's worth it too to take the extra second to kind of walk around and make sure because the titanium is so thin that you have all the edges lined up and that way you don't tack it and then have like a lip overhanging because that'll be a, a future issue when you start to weld it. So when I'm tacking these pieces, I actually am putting a little pressure to make sure that they're fully seated up to each other and to make sure that there's no lip, the uh, pipes aren't like overhanging on either side. HD alignment tool and you can see it sets up the proper gap between both sides that way once we put the everything together it's going to still have that rotation or that movement and that way this isn't a solid pipe snug it up and then I like to always just kind of spin the uh, assemblies off to the one side to get them out of the way get our pipe in place and then tighten it down now it's going to hold it perfectly in place for us All right, so we have the intercooler removed off the car. Since we're using HD clamps off the intercooler and the throttle body, what we just did it was we cleaned the necks of the intercooler because this was run before already. 
Uh, and now we're gonna be tacking on the HD weld ferrules on both sides. They're an aluminum weld ferrule to match the aluminum intercooler. Uh, and then the uh, other side will be a titanium weld ferrule. We bought that separately from the assembly and that'll what, be what starts the uh, titanium three and a half uh, cold side intercooler pipe. So if you don't have an actual tube polisher, another way of doing it is taking your piece, putting in the lathe is what we do at the shop quite a bit, and then using a piece of Scotch-Brite while the lathe is running to uh, get the piece polished. And now, we have a nice brush finish on our tube. So I'm just taping that last straight we just polished or brushed into place. That way I can test fit the lower 90, make sure we'll have room for a, a coupler there. That way the uh, cold side and the hot side can both be two pieces. So the upper sections can be taken out through the top of the bay and the lower sections can be taken off when they take off the bumper. All right, so what I'm doing now, I'm just switching the machine over to uh, weld uh, the titanium pieces. I'm gonna attack this three to three and a half inch transition piece I made in titanium to the titanium weld ferrule. And that's gonna be what starts our three and a half cold side and allows us to uh, hook up to our three inch outlet on our aluminum intercooler. All right, so we have just finished taping the last few pieces into place. I always like to do this. I have the 90s tacked together and the other bend radius in the back tacked together. And I like to tape in the straights just so I can check that the fitment is exactly how I want it. The tire is gonna clear the intercooler pipe on full lock um, and that we have lots of space on the body. The bumper fits nicely. The fog light actually sits right here beside it. So this pipe looks good. I'm gonna bring the car down, take a look from the top, make sure everything looks good from there. And then if it is, we'll remove the pieces, uh, tack in our tape sections, and then this one's ready to get prepped to either be colored and then welded or welded then colored. So that'll be the next step on the cold side. All right, so we have all the pieces off of the car on the bench right now. They're about to get cleaned and prepped for either coloring or welding. We're gonna to talk to the client first and see if he wants to have the welds done after coloring, which will give uh, what we like to call the zebra stripes, the white welding lines through all the coloring. Uh, or if he wants to weld it first and then color it after or potentially not color it at all. So that's gonna be the, the next step that we find out for this. And I've also got the throttle body and the compressor cover off the car so those pieces can get welded as well. Um, after we do that, we'll bead roll the sections that go into the silicone couplers and then get everything back on the car again so that we can find out where all the uh, blow off valve flange will go. All right, so right now we got all the intercooler piping off getting cleaned up colored and then welded. And while that's happening, what we're gonna do is we're going to remove this old stainless steel downpipe that the car's been using. And we're gonna start building our new pie cut exhaust that goes out the fender. It's gonna have like a nice teardrop. It should look really good. So we're gonna get started on that next. Um, so stick around. This was a vibrant turbo outlet clamp. There'd be a little quick release clasp on the side makes your life a lot easier doing this instead of having to tighten and loosen this bolt down every time you take on and off the downpipe. So right now we are about to tack on another one of these little mini three to three and a half transitions for the turbo outlet flange. That's going to take our three inch turbo outlet up to a three and a half downpipe for the fender exit. So we'll tack that in place now. Yeah. 
right here we have our three and a half pie cut 90 taxi taped together and I'm going to tack this together that way we can use that with our flange and our transition to start mocking up the downpipe. <laughs> Right now, I am just mocking up the sections off the turbo, trying to find uh, a good design that gives us lots of clearance on the body. Um, it's also gonna look good too, because it's right in our faces, um, and plan out the different straights and how it's gonna come out of the car. So it's kind of why I got some different janky cutoff pieces taped together, so I can kind of get a visualization and, and see what it's gonna look like before I commit to cutting the titanium pieces. I like to do them in sections of two before I put them into a 90. So I'll tack these two together and I got these two and these two, and then I'll turn it into four and then into six, and that'll give us that full 90. All right, so what I've done now is I've got the first section of the downpipe off the car, uh, and then the section that's gonna exit out the fender. So what I'm gonna do next, is I'm actually gonna weld both these sides so they can shrink a little bit uh, before I cut the last piece that'll connect them. I've also marked out where I want the O2 bung to be, so after I weld this, I can get that part drilled as well. So I'm gonna take this back to our shop now, uh, get this all welded and fit up, and then come back and we can refit it on the car and see uh, what the length of our last piece is gonna be. The next day. All right, so we just got uh, the intercooler piping back from our shop at Fusion Motorsport. Uh, we got the piping colored. Uh, we used uh, heat to color these ones. Um, and then we got everything welded after we heated it up and colored it. And that's what actually gives us these stripes. A lot of people call them zebra stripes or tiger stripes, but this was all colored first and then after it was welded. And that's what gives us that breakup or that white line in between it. The next thing we're going to be doing for these is getting them back on the car. Everything will be a final install except for this one pipe right here. This pipe will be getting the blow-off valve flange. So we have a titanium vibrant blow-off valve flange for the blow-off valve. So we're going to color that, find a good location for it on that pipe, and then uh, get that welded on. So the next thing we have is the uh, exhaust. And the exhaust we also brought back to Fusion and had the pie cuts welded off the turbo, as well as the pie cuts welded for the portion that's gonna be coming out of the fender. So the next thing I need to do is actually cut the teardrop shape into the fender that the uh, tip portion that's sticking out is gonna be. So uh, the guys that own the car were nice enough to cut the first four inch hole through both sides of the fender, through the actual outside and the inner part. So I'm just gonna shape it up to give it the uh, right size hole for the uh, exhaust or the downpipe to exit through. So right now what we're gonna do before we get ready to put these onto the cars, we're gonna throw all the HD assembly O-rings on. So I like to uh, get them all on the pipes. And then after they're on the pipes, we use a, an easy slide, which is like a dielectric synthetic grease. And that'll just help for all the uh, union sleeves to slide together and for all these assemblies to come together nicely without having to push and fight and struggle. It'll also make it a lot easier for when they come off if they ever have to in the future. And I know a lot of people want to know or ask why, but we do have a silicone hump coupler between our upper and lower pipe. 
The reason I do this is because it makes getting the upper or lower pipe off a lot easier. It also makes lining them up a lot easier as well. So if you're at the track or working on the car and you want to get this pipe out quickly or remove the turbo, it's easy to snap off the one HD clamp, loosen the one T-bolt clamp off the coupler and then slide this pipe up and out. Or same thing if you're taking the lower pipe down and off the bottom of the car. how easy it is with the new ones with the pinless clamps. You just literally push the one side in and it's got the releasing tab. These are a lot nicer than having to fiddle with the solo pin and not drop it when you're assembling these. So right now what I'm doing is I'm putting on the three and a half HD alignment tool. This, in my opinion, is a, a very necessary tool when you're building these systems using the HD clamps. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to take it on and off without having to either put the whole assembly together to get this connection together or to have to tape it and then untape it every time you want to adjust it. So having the HD alignment tool and being able to have it snug so it's holding it in place but still adjust the tube or move it where you need will save a, a ton of time when you're fabricating uh, HD pipe or HD clamp assembly intercooler pipes. Because we use the HD alignment tools during the whole process, you can see with the HD alignment tool on there, the coupler together that holds the upper and lower cold side pipe together, we have a nice like perfect one eighth gap between the uh, HD flanges. And that's what we want to have to allow this tube to have uh, movement and flexibility and while the car's driving and making passes. If you use the clamp to help line up the uh, union sleeve, it'll make your life a lot easier. Here, that nice snap together. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna use some uh, propane gas uh, that we have here at Vibrant to color our blow off valve flange before we mock it up and get it welded on. So there's two different w primary ways of coloring titanium. And one is with heat or using flame, like you, people use roofing torches or map gas torches. And the other way is to uh, chemically uh, dip it into a solution and color it that way. Uh, I personally like using heat a little bit better. It gives you a little bit brighter colors in my opinion. So we're gonna heat this up, give it kind of a bluey purple look to match all the rest of the intercooler piping. super hot. That's why we did this now, because now we can let this cool. I gotta find out how, uh, or what piece, that last piece of the exhaust to connect the portion off the turbo to the section that goes out that's a teardrop tip. So we can do that while this cools, and then by the time we're done doing that, this will be ready to go onto the car. So what we're doing now is we got the uh, first section of the downpipe off of the turbo on, finalized, done, the O2 bung in there. And now we're working on the tip portion that's gonna be sticking out the fender. So we just finished cutting a piece to connect or go in between these two different straight sections with bends. And now I've marked it out on the fender. So I'm gonna cut it out so that it follows the body line of the fender and kind of flows with the car. So that's what we're gonna go do now and we'll see how it turns out. All right, so what we just finished doing was getting this side cut to exit through the fender. Now that we had that, we were able to mark and tack it to the first section that comes off the turbo of the downpipe. And now what we're doing is we're using some TIG Aesthetics purge plugs to fill this tube up with argon. That way the tube's properly back purged, we can get some good penetration and make sure that this doesn't crack uh, when it gets used in the future. So something I always do when I'm welding is I always think what's going to be the top and what's going to be the bottom. So when people are looking at it, uh, we can make sure to put certain things in certain spots. And one of those things is our start stop, though we can make them look pretty. It's always nice to have the start and stops on the bottom of the tube. This is the bottom of the tube. So that's where we started all the welding. And that's where we're going to start our two welds for this last piece of this downpipe.
So what we're doing right now is we're putting in the final piece. We got the blow off valve flange attached. And uh, yeah, now time to put it together. So we've just finished putting our last intercooler pipe on the car. And now everything that we're doing here is wrapped up. We have the three and a half cold side intercooler pipe with a three inch hot side pipe from the turbo to the intercooler. So uh, starting from the top here, we have the three and a half HD clamp off the throttle body. It's got the tile blow off valve flange. Uh, then it comes down, there's a silicone coupler joining the upper and lower intercooler pipe together. And then you can see here, if you look at the pipe, it still actually does have quite a bit of movement. I know that's always a big question is, are they solid? No, the two, uh, the clamps have movement or uh, can move in any direction. Um, then coming over to the other side, the hot side off the turbo, we shortened the compressor cover down so we could put that Cas90 off of the turbo outlet. Then we have a three inch HD clamp and it goes down just like the cold side has the coupler connecting the upper and lower intercooler pipes together and then goes down to the uh, intercooler where it has another HD clamp that joins it up. And just like the other side, this side also has that movement where the pipe can go in and out or up and down, which is good. We need that, it helps prevent anything from cracking when it actually gets used. And then lastly, we have the three and a half titanium pie cut exhaust. It comes off of the turbo and goes directly out the vendor. It's got 102 sensor bung in it. And, uh, and then it's got a teardrop style that comes out the fender. The next part for this will be putting the uh, bezel or the beauty ring around it. And that's gonna just finish the look of the fender uh, where the tip comes through it. All right, guys, this wraps up our time here at Vibrant building this uh, titanium intercooler piping kit and downpipe for this IS300. Uh, we thank the guys at Vibrant and uh, everyone at Fusion Motorsport uh, for getting everything together and uh, for making this happen. If you guys want to see more of this content, check out Vibrant Performance. They have more videos like this uh, already up and more to come. Thanks, guys.